Welcome in, my name's Ryan, I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, Joe Douglas gave his end of off-season press conference, beginning of season press conference, however you want to say it. It's the first time we've seen the GM since we got down to cut down day on Tuesday, and now that we've got our practice squad kind of figured out, he gave some questions to reporters, or questions from reporters came from reporters, and he gave answers to it. And one of the answers that came up was the opportunity to trade and make something happen in season, and the Jets have great cap flexibility because of all the, uh, obviously the Corey Davis retirement, but also like just rolling in and having Rodgers take $35 million less this year, so there was a whole lot going on. So I wanna get into the clip and then I'll give you guys three players that I think the New York Jets could trade for, give you their costs, some of their stats and what I kind of evaluate uh, as our big need going forward. So let's hop in to the Joe Douglas clip. When you were in Philly and it was that same Super Bowl year, but also how he does it all the time, is he seems to be one of those guys who's most aggressive with in-season acquisitions when it's ready to pounce. So how do you know when is the right time to pounce? Is it kind of around that deadline? Is it earlier in the season? I mean, you guys might be aggressive, but how and when do you decide? Yeah, I think it's every situation is a little different. Um, you know, the Super Bowl year in Philly, we had an opportunity to acquire Jay Ajayi and, and you know, bringing him in with with LeGarrette, it really solidified the running back room and it uh, we were a bust all in the playoffs that year. So, you know, you just – you just have to be ready, you know, when this opportunity comes. You don't know who or when it's going to happen, but um, again, we've got great flexibility moving forward if that opportunity does present itself. Joe Douglas immediately brings up his time in Philadelphia and how they traded for Jay Ajayi when they had LeGarrette Blunt and how they just ran right through the playoffs and it really set them up for success and ultimately winning a Super Bowl. And it definitely harkens back to the Jets already having Brees Hall and then we come in and we use some of the cap space that Joe Douglas allowed us to have and Aaron Rodgers allowed us to have and we bring in Dalvin Cook. So now we got our buzzsaw to go through, but we still got like $20 million dollars or whatever that we could use to make an in-season trade or when a, the opportunity presents itself, as Joe Douglas says. So I wanted to take a look into what players could become available and what it would cost to get them and, and all that good stuff. So first we gotta figure out how much cap space we have per over the cap. We have about $20 million. Um, this, they have like 18 million is what they said. And then there's the Bryce Hall cut that just happened or pay cut that just happened. So it's about $20 million for over the cap. Spot track has us at 13.7. I'm not really sure why that is what that is, but I'm going to go with somewhere in the middle, right? <laughs> it's going to be somewhere in that, in that ballpark. We got plenty of money to bring in a top tier uh, kind of weapon that we think could help us on the way to a potential playoff and Super Bowl run. So the first player on our list made a video about him the other day. This is Darnell Mooney, 26 years old. He's actually 25 right now. He'll be 26 soon. Five foot 11, 175 pounds. He has one year, $3 million left on his contract if traded. I am projecting him costing about a second round pick. And if he's given an extension, you're looking at three years, 45 million or about $15 million a year, which does fall into that space between like the 13.7 million and the $20 million that we're projected to have. And this guy is a legitimate deep threat. We don't really have that right now. We're kind of hoping Hardman can provide a little bit of that along with all the gadget stuff, but we don't have that solid number too. So Wide receiver is kind of where I'm, I'm going on this list here. If I, if I had to pick a position of need that would also help Aaron Rodgers, I mean, I guess offensive line would probably do it as well. But anyway, Mooney, elite deep threat, crazy good hands. The only reason they would be looking to get rid of him, the Bears would be, is because they're, they already have DJ Moore. They already have Chase Claypool. So now you're getting into a situation like, are you going to extend Mooney at the end of the year? Again, I don't think this trade happens right now. I think it would have to happen near the trade deadline when they've decided, okay, Justin Fields is what he is. We know what he is, or we're confident in moving on off a wide receiver that we're not going to have. Let's try to get a compensation pick or a pick to be compensated with <laughs> before we let him walk in for agency. And I think a second round pick gets this done. I would totally do this. I think this is absolutely a long-term move. This isn't like a 30 year old wide receiver that you're making a move for. And then all of a sudden he's going to be gone. You're giving him a big deal. Like $15 million a year, you're basically saying Corey Davis plus like $3 million and obviously the rights to get him. So if it's a second round pick or third round pick or whatever it is. Uh, but I would be pretty happy with this. Now, as far as stats go, if you take his average across his career, so he's, this is his fourth year in the league. He had a broken ankle last year, so he didn't play in all the games. But if you take it and you average his whole career and you make it a 17 game schedule, he averages about 69 receptions, 823 yards and four touchdowns. And then if you look, you could see the deep marks as really good. Where's my finger? Boom. 94.7, 98.8. You look at the middle of the field, 91.9. The other side of the field, 91.4. And even up the uh, 
the right outside 76.1. Clearly this guy is a legitimate deep threat and he's really had like shit quarterback play for <laughs> the last three years. He's had, you know, Justin Fields is exciting. He's not the passer that you kind of wish he was. So getting him with Aaron Rodgers, I think there's a lot of potential for growth and you might be able to get him slightly cheaper because he may want to get two different contracts. It may be like, hey, I want a Band-Aid one because you want to see that he's healthy this year. Obviously trading for him in season would be beneficial for both the Bears from a value perspective and like the Jets for being able to just see that he's healthy before you give him this big contract. You don't want to make this trade right now, in my opinion. Uh, but Darnell Mooney, number one. Number two on my list, this is a really good one. I really like Tyler Boyd a lot from Cincinnati. He's 28 years old. He's six foot two, 203 pounds. If traded, he would be on a one year, $8.5 million contract. I'm projecting him to cost about a second round pick. And just like uh, Darnell Mooney, three years, 45 million, that's $15 million a year is what the contract's gonna cost. And you look at the, the body of work, this guy is just productive. He has Chase in front of him. He has Higgins in front of him. And Boyd might be the one kind of on the outside over here. And as much as everyone, you know, maybe, I said maybe would prefer Higgins, but I think just the ability to maybe get a legitimate number two wide receiver that has like high upside. It's insane how good that Cincinnati wide receiver room is. Now, as far as his stats go, if you break his games up into a 17 game season over the course of his career, 74 receptions, 880 yards and five touchdowns a year. And this guy's productive all over the field. Like the entire field is blue <laughs> for Tyler Boyd. The guy just produces. Now he has had really good quarterback play in Joe Burrow. So you're probably saying, well, all right, it's not quite an apples to apples comparison when you're talking about Darnell Mooney and Tyler Boyd, but in a contract year, maybe halfway through the season, it might make sense for the Bengals to, to make a move. Now it depends where they are as far as like a Super Bowl run goes. If someone gets hurt, maybe they're more likely to, to make a move or something along those lines. But overall, Tyler Boyd, number two on my list. Now, number three, this one appears to be a fire sale out in Arizona, and this is Hollywood Brown, 26 years old, five foot 10, 168 pounds. He's got one year, $13.4 million left on his contract. That is the fifth year option that was exercised after he was traded to Arizona. I'm projecting his cost is gonna be about a second round pick. So really all these guys are sitting in that same sort of threshold. Now, remember the Jets gave up their first round pick for Aaron Rodgers. So you're not gonna have your second round pick, or at least most likely you're not gonna have it because you're assuming Aaron Rodgers is gonna play at least 65% of the snaps, which is the trigger to make it a first round pick. Three years, $50 million is what Spot Track projects Hollywood Brown's contract to be. So that's $16.6 .6 million per year. From a statistics standpoint, you're looking at 77 receptions, 900 yards, and seven touchdowns per year. So this guy is insanely productive. And I would say a similar spread of targets and um, production throughout the entirety of the grid of football and these different uh, quadrants here, or quarters, or thirds. Uh, I like this. I like this a lot. I think the Jets could use this type of wide receiver. One of these three guys, I think should be wearing a New York Jet uniform by the season's end because God forbid something happens to Garrett Wilson or Alan Lazard. Our room, while I like it, there's a lot to be desired. And Mecole Hardman, he hasn't really shown to be this level of player. They're like, there's a reason why he signed for $6 million and we're kind of seeing like, oh, you know, a little bit of injury stuff that we saw in Kansas City, you saw a little bit of the drop stuff. And Aaron Rodgers, he doesn't like drops. He's not gonna throw you the ball. So if you're not gonna be able to take advantage of someone like Hardman and he's just gonna be doing like the gadget stuff, then maybe it makes sense to bring in another weapon that could provide some of that deep ball over the top type stuff that'll at least free up the tight ends and free up the running backs in the, you know, near the line of scrimmage. So guys, let me know. What did you think of the three players that I presented right here? What did you think of Joe Douglas's quote? Do you think that he has a particular position group in mind or do you think he has certain players that he's keeping an eye on? Let me know any players that I may have missed down below in the comment section. And as always, go Jets. Jets!